So I'm kind of like the guy who's uh, kind of looks after the laboratories for soil for quality control testing. I run programs for the agriculture for soils, plants, and waters. I do programs for the compost industry. I've been associated with the manure testing program since it was initiated back in the late 1990s. Uh, Jerry Florin, who is our co-author on this paper, uh, has been worked with Jerry for almost the last 25 years on looking at manure, quality of manure analysis. So, I got a touchy mouse here. So farmers rely on manure testing to determine their crop nutrient requirements. And the primary goal of this program is to ensure that farmers receive accurate manure testing by using laboratories that are certified for manure testing. As I said, the program was initiated in the late 1990s. Uh, we went through a major expansion about 2001 with uh, funding from the EPA. Certification requires acceptable laboratory performance on both phosphorus and total nitrogen for the uh, MDA program. And we really focus on two primary methods for looking at nitrogen. That is the traditional TKN method and the uh, nitrogen by combustion method, which has been rapidly replacing the TKN method in the laboratories. So, <laughs> The whole purpose of the program was to assist laboratories in verifying their analytical quality in terms of the accuracy and precision. Uh, the methods in the, in the program are based on the 1998 NCR 13 publication, which was published by John Peters out of the University of Wisconsin, Methods of Manure Analysis. That, that manual took a long time to come together. It was over 10 years in the making. And it's available at this website, but it's being replaced and I'll have a little bit more information about that at the end. So when we talk about lab proficiency, what is that? Well, we send out, or in this case, MDA sends out uh, manure samples to these labs twice a year. This is a single blind exchange, meaning that the laboratories know that these are performance assessment samples. They just don't know what the analytical values are. And we look at basically three kinds of manures going out in the program. We look at dairy backslash beef, we look at swine, we look at poultry sources. And each manure sample is submitted in triplicate. Uh, it's really a rigorous preparation process. Uh, Jerry Florin became very highly experienced in how to do this because liquid manures are a real challenge in terms of blending them and homogenizing so that every lab is getting pretty much the same material. The PT program do aliquots, they're subsamples and they're subsequently frozen before they are sent to the lab. Uh, on the solid samples, we grind to a minimum particle size and do a bulk blending. It's really critical that we get good homogeneity for the analysis that we're looking at, specifically total land and total P here and samples are shipped frozen overnight to laboratory participants. Now, when we look at this data coming back from these laboratories, uh, so to keep in mind, we're seeing about 65, 75 laboratories in the United States which participate in this program. It's really important to look at the statistics behind how we say, okay, this is the number, this is the value, analytical value on that sample. So what we do is that we look at this data sets and we, we have to understand it's not normally distributed. So we use a technique called the median, the median and the median absolute deviation to describe what those values are in these proficiency samples. At the right here is a graph showing the upper control limit and the lower control limit and the individual values for nitrogen combustion on a sample that was submitted in 2006. The little error bars, because each laboratory measures each sample in triplicate, gives us a measure of what the internal precision is within that laboratory. Uh, <clears throat> individual lab method precision is assessed based on these three replications. So in essence, we say any lab that exceeds the 95% confidence limits of the median is considered to be outside the performance range on that sample. <laughs> Now, one, two terms I want to make clear to everybody so that we, we understand what I get off in the statistics sometimes and we have to define. So the one is the interlaboratory relative median difference. It's a, it's a measure of the variance across the multiple laboratories. It's basically the MAD divided by the median times 100. That's what's telling us what the overall variance on a PT sample is across the industry. 
The other one is the interlaboratory RSD. This is the amount of precision that we look at with any particular laboratory relative to a, a standard deviation by the mean of the three replicates. So in essence, we have two values we're looking at. How well does the industry have for interlaboratory variance? And what is that variance within a laboratory? Our typical reports that's been submitted out to in the proficiency program in the past is exampled here at the right. This gets to be a pretty busy uh, reporting sheet. We have total solids, electrical conductivity, NPKS, and some micronutrients. It's a lot of information there, but really what you really, what a laboratory really needs to focus on is that very last column, whether they have with their precisions, if their precision exceeds what we say is the industry norms, or what if their if individual value, in this case for total Keldahl nitrogen, was low, it was used by the, the uh, red flag there by the L symbol. So, and also, we also put in these reports in the past a graphic to show you the distribution of the results from the various laboratories that provided information. And we list those by different analytes. And below there, you see total solid distribution, EC data distribution, and TKN. Now, when we look at these proficiency results, I'm just going to look at two samples that we submitted in 2003, A and B. If you look at these two samples, I, I use these two because they're strikingly different samples. So total solids for the first one is 74%, sample B is 1.5. So we're looking at a solid basically manure and a liquid manure side by side that were run at the same proficiency cycle. And you can see there the 95% confidence limits on total solids is 2%, whereas the one on the liquid sample is 0.26%. But realize there's about a 70 fold difference in the total solid concentrations. As we go down the list, we have TKN and nitrogen by combustion here. You'll see, you know, both methods found very similar values. Uh, TKN was pretty much the dominant method of the industry 25 years ago. Today, it's pretty much a fraction of the industry. And there's phosphorus and there's potassium, these two samples again, uh, you know, widely different numbers because of the total solids contents on this. So it's really critical to the PT program that we look at manures from different sources and different types of total solids. It really helps the laboratories figure out whether they're really good at a particular type of matrix or not. Now, when I get into the data analysis on this, sometimes I get off at the deep end on this because I'm really more of a statistics guy and looking at these things here. But here are two examples of the interlab method RMD. This is the variance between labs on a whole range of samples that were submitted between 2003 and 2018. These samples vary in total solids contents from 1% to, to almost oh, just over 90%. So there's 108 samples in these two graphs at the right. And we have the nitrogen combustion results there, and we have the TKN results. And I have to move my, <laughs> have to move my bar here so I can see this. Okay, so the TKN is at the left, and as you can see, there's pretty good consistency across the labs in terms of the interlaboratory RMD until we get down to about two or three percent, I'm sorry, 0.2, 0.3% TKN concentrations. If we look at nitrogen by combustion, we notice that boy, you get down to about a half a percent total nitrogen in a sample, a manure sample, and then it just explodes. And that particular methodology just doesn't seem to be refined as well to do liquid manure samples as the more traditional TKN method is. Now, we have manure samples. These are liquid samples that were ran through the program between 2003 and 2009, the TKN on the left and the nitrogen by combustion on the right. Now, I use a technique called Kate Nelson to divide out where we can put these in quadrants. And I did this because it really exemplifies what the differences are in these two methodologies across a range of liquid manure samples that were ran over a six year period, 27 samples in total. And you'll see there the TKN method starts to become noisy across the industry at around 0.2% TKN nitrogen. Whereas at the right on nitrogen combustion, it's a much higher value, almost twice the range it starts to become noisy across all the laboratories that provided us data here once we hit about 0.4, 0.5%.
In essence, this is the limits of the instrumentation that's being employed. The TKN method, even though it is the oldest method, seems to be more refined in being able to do total in on very low manure tested samples, i.e. liquid manures. If we look at the data set though, from 2010 to 2018, we've ran 22 liquid manures. Uh, these have total solids less than 12%. And you'll see there the TKN number over this last period of about eight years is pretty constant. It is all under 10% and within a long-term average across those 22 samples of about, about 8%. Whereas the nitrogen by combustion, yes, it's got, in be it's got better, but it still has a much higher interlaboratory variance. In essence, we've in the, the methodology of the PT program shows improvement of laboratories over time specifically on the TKN method, but also to a limited extent on the nitrogen by combustion method. So now I like to take a real brief moment because when clients send samples to manure testing laboratories, it's nice to know that one laboratory is different than another, but what can we expect within a laboratory, that intra-laboratory intra precision? So here are samples ran from 2010 through 2018. And we have 54 manure samples and we have TKN and we have combustion. And this is basically that internal precision that these laboratories are performing. And as you'll see there, the TKN method, it kind of bounces around. Remember we have liquid samples, semi-solid samples and solid samples in, in, in this data set. But when we get down to very low TKN values, i.e. samples are pretty much a liquid matrix, about 0.5% you know, is about that point where that intralaboratory precision just explodes. And it goes up to an average of probably three or 4%. Whereas on concentrations higher, it runs about two. However, nitrogen by combustion, as we've seen earlier, it starts to inflate within a laboratory on about a concentration of 0.5%. Probably on samples that have a total solids content in the eight to 10% was where the nitrogen combustion starts to increase. And you, the clients need to be aware of this particular number because this is that precision and what they can expect if they have a good representative sample submitted to the laboratory. We talk about interlaboratory precision on phosphorus. Again, here we have a liquid manure sample versus semi-solid manure samples. You'll see that those liquid samples have a much higher interlab variability with an RSD of about 10% across all those samples that were ran, the 108 samples. If uh, we look at you know, phosphorus just on the semi-solid samples, then it's a much tighter thing. Again, you get a better representative sample because we're dealing with much higher concentrations. So results of this program show that nitrogen analysis for the TKN method is pretty consistent and it gives a bit lower interlaboratory RMD value across that. And why is that? The TKN method typically uses a larger subsample within the laboratory. And generally the nitrogen, comb nitrogen combustion instruments have a higher MDL, a method detection limit than the TKN method. And therefore it is not as accurate on the very low testing of the, the liquid manure samples. So for liquid manures under 12%, we recommended the TKN method for nitrogen analysis. You know, a lot of laboratories over the years have moved to nitrogen combustion because it's more, it's more, uh, it's a more robust method for doing it. But the problem is, is when we get into low total solids, it just doesn't quite work as well as our existing TKN method. MAP results showing continuing improvement in laboratories over for nitrogen analysis, both in terms of precisions and that within laboratories and between laboratories. It's been shown, it's, it, it's in very it's significant that I, my, in my observations that liquid manure samples have gotten consistently better, probably in part because the laboratory feedback mechanism from proficiency programs has shown that laboratories have learned how to sharpen the knife when they're working in the lab. Interlaboratory RSD values are the poorest precision of samples with the lowest total solids. No surprise there, we start to approach method detection limits and this is, this is always a problem. I'd like to acknowledge uh, thanks to Larry Gunderson, supervisor at the, at the Fertilizer Management of MDA in St. Paul, Minnesota. He's been an instrumental for keeping this program on track the last 
last decade. And one big note for all those who have associates in the laboratory industry, the new manure methods, the new, the second edition of the recommended methods for manure analysis has been published by the University of Minnesota Library and is now available at this address. I'm sure that this information is gonna be posted out there. Uh, congratulations to Melissa Wilson and hurting all the authors and getting this, this document finished up. And with that, uh, I offer you, you can get a contact me at this particular address. 